Europe is shaken up right now as we see Greece saying no to the IMF. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Greek voters have rebelled against the austerity program imposed by Brussels and Berlin in return for loans to fund Greece's massive debt. The radical left Syriza party, which promises better terms for Greece, won a decisive victory. So they had elections that took place and they voted in a party that is promising to be different than the last. So we'll see where that goes. I wanted to cover this one point because the mainstream media will definitely cover the news. They'll read you the articles word for word and they'll use their talking points but this is the money gps where i try to get you to start asking questions so they said the austerity program imposed by brussels and berlin now we have brussels the eu making decisions for all of these countries greece included and they're not elected they're not government officials as they like to call themselves they are not any of this they do not report to the people they simply work for the bankers and that's what happens that's why you cannot have sovereignty that's why you cannot have a good economy when the bankers are in control because their profits are are the absolute most important thing and also Berlin as well Germany is now making decisions for what's going to happen in other countries including Greece now I understand why because Germany is a strong nation they're going to be lending money and they're using it as an opportunity to fund themselves but this is where you have a big problem with Europe because Europe itself one interest rate one currency they're all going to sink together and that's why they've considered you know greece may want to move out of the eu and germany might want to move out of the eu and they'll go back to their own currencies and so on and so forth we've seen this all before i believe that the nations will remain together and in fact more nations will join the eu at least that's what the global elite desire so we're going to move on right here the Greek rebellion against its EU economic overlords may provoke a prolonged economic siege as Syriza seeks to negotiate new terms for a bailout while the EU waits for a lack of money to force Greece to comply with existing agreements. So here they are, Syriza saying, we are not going to pay these guys off. Don't worry about it. We're going to save you from everything. And this is definitely not going to fare very well for the EU. They are suggesting that this this isn't over yet. Just because you voted in a new party, you still have much to pay for. So it's interesting the way this is going. And in the article, they say it's like playing a game of chicken. And you could see how that is heading in this direction. What I'm trying to say about this new party, the Syriza getting voted in, is not necessarily that they're good or bad. All we need to know is that we need to keep our eyes open because everyone presents themselves as being different from the last. Look at Obama saying change, 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 and he surely didn't really change too much. Everything just continued to get worse. There's a continual slide that has occurred, but this very well could be beneficial for for Greece as a whole, but they have to kick out the bankers. They can't necessarily get out of the EU right away, but they should be aiming to do so. But this government apparently doesn't want to go in that direction. This is what the uh, new head of state has said. The Greek people have written history. Greece is leaving behind catastrophic austerity, fear, and autocratic government. Now, this would be okay, but if you read what their plans are, it simply doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It seems really like more of the same. The austerity measures I consider to be no different than any other form of taxation, but they want to increase taxation in many avenues so what they're really planning on doing i'm not sure so let's move on to this in france italy and spain voters are kicking against the mainstream parties that they see upholding eu institutions such as the euro while failing to represent their own people the voters and that is exactly what i was talking about right at the beginning and france italy and spain are all part of this and you know all the other nations are too they don't want a technocratic elite sitting above their government making 
making their decisions when they can't even have these fake elections at the very least. And that's what happens and that's how things begin to fall apart at the seams. One interest rate, one currency being a very, very big failure. They do not represent the people and that's being very clear in Greece. We had the riots that were taking place a few years ago. So let's talk about that for a moment. In 2011, repackaging the debt of Greece and others with a date further into the future is their solution. You don't need to be an economist to understand that pushing debt further into the future isn't going to solve the problem. It only delays the inevitable. And that's what happened. And that's when you saw all of the riots taking place in the streets of Athens. They were throwing all sorts of uh, Molotov cocktails and they were essentially lighting the streets up on fire. And this is all because of you know what you would call anti-government uh, the protests but it takes off and really becomes a problem when you have the militarized police on the street you have the military on the street and you have uh, civil wars that can pop up civil unrest and this is a very very big problem so they need to get their situation under control and I don't think necessarily any individual government or party is going to be able to provide them with solutions and it needs to happen on the grassroots for example if you don't like the bankers if the bankers are stealing everything you have from underneath your nose but you keep putting your money into the bank you keep putting your savings into the bank well then you're just fueling them and you're funding them so you need to take the action into your own hands people think that well you know what i'm just one person not going to make a difference i assure you one person can make a difference and you need to do your part don't worry about what anyone else is doing you need to do your part i'm going to move on right here before i continue to rant Confessions of an Economic Hitman. This is a very, very telling book. And this is just one of many, not just by John Perkins, but you can read into the details of this on your own. Basically, if you haven't read this already, if you don't want to read it, which I do suggest you do read it, if you don't want to read it, at the very least, watch some of his uh, YouTube videos and you'll see him uh, interviews that he's done and it's very, uh, very, very good information. But essentially what he said was that he would go in and try to strategize with particular governments and say, listen, we have a pro proposition for you. We're going to come in here. We're going to build an oil field and you're going to pay us some money. You're going to allow uh, certain companies to come in. And that's just the way it is. And if not, you know, there's going to be a little bit of trouble. So he would go in and be all polite to them and nice to them. And essentially, if they didn't take his proposal, then they basically brought in the jackals and they try to overthrow the government and this has happened many times before we've been seeing that what's happening with nations being overthrown and this has as i said happened before so that's the jackals and then if that doesn't work then you bring in the military so we see military invasions happening in many countries specifically by the u.s by nato and they just go in there and take it over and we can assume that previously to that they tried to overthrow the government if that didn't work you know that a guy like john perkins had been in there before trying to negotiate this on a peaceful level but of course it doesn't seem to work like that so look at what's happening in greece how we have the imf being put in place and they are there in essentially to steal the sovereignty of the nation and give up all of their economic assets, all their precious historic assets as well. This is one thing I just wanted to note. I'm not necessarily linking anything, but you can see their communist flag at the Syriza party. Uh, people are waving around celebrating and it says communista on it if you look closely. You can uh, zoom in on that later if you want. But I just wanted to note the hammer and the sickle and what has brought on this uh, throughout history. Europe bans despotic Soviet hammer and sickle from commercial use. This is out of the Telegraph. A top European court banned the Soviet Union's famous hammer and sickle from being used as a commercial trademark as it is a symbol of despotism in some EU countries. Now, this is quite fitting right here, how we can see this right now with the Syriza party coming in. They consider themselves to be on the far left, and the far left is responsible for some criminal activity in the past. But does that mean that 
the right is uh, not guilty of that as well. They are all guilty of what they have done in the past. Let's get into this right here just briefly before I give you my opinion on it. We have the previous governments and current governments where they have the hammer and sickle being used in their flag. And you could see this, even the Communist Party of Vietnam. You look at the Lebanese Communist Party. They have many communist parties all around the world and basically are using this hammer and sickle. Now, if you've ever looked into David Icke, if you've actually read a book by David Icke and not just seen a couple of videos of him and wondering why he's talking about lizards, look at what he said about the hammer and sickle specifically. You can see how this is a problem that has been going on for a while, decades in fact, while they're able to use this as a symbol in a way, sort of symboling, symbolizing that freedom for the people while they'll get their fair share and all of this sort of business. But undoubtedly, I see the hammer and sickle as a symbol of death, in fact. Let's look at this right here, where we have 20th century demo side. That is death by government. And we look at the different nations, China, USSR, and others as well. You can go down the list for yourself. But the two top two here, China and the USSR, with the hammer and the sickle leading the pack for a total deaths of 262 million people. That's almost like the entire U.S. being exterminated all because of the hammer and sickle. And this is very concerning to me when we see any particular party using that at all. Not because of what they may do. They're not going to go out and start lynching people. I'm not saying that. But is the symbolism behind that? What exactly are the motives of any particular government? We don't want to just give up our power to a government that says they're going to do and promote change. You can't just do that. You need to get rid of as many of the layers of government as you possibly can and go back to restoring the people. And that's what we need to do. We don't need more regulations. In fact, we need to go back on the regulations. We need to start going away from all of these. They need regulations on things like putting genetically modified food into our store shelves. They need to put regulations on uh, institutions that are basically allowed to encroach on people's sovereignty. But we don't need particular regulations that often block you from becoming prosperous and they give loopholes to the big institutions. We need to keep an eye on what's going to happen in Greece. You know, it very well could fare well overall. This could be a very beneficial step. At least the rhetoric here is beneficial, but I'm just really concerned because of what we saw with Obama and how he lied to the people, hope and change, hope and change, hope and change, and they are still nearly uh, two terms late Later, still the people are fooled by him and this is quite embarrassing to see people just thinking you know what just give him a chance he's got some time left he's gonna make some actions executive actions and he's gonna fix the problem but as we see things keep getting worse this is just a video that I wanted to do to help you to ask questions and that's what we need to do i don't know all the answers that's for sure and i'm sure you don't know either but if we start asking questions we can peel back the layers of this onion and get to the bottom of what's happening here we have a global elite sitting on top of all of the other governments the governments then take their orders from those elite and we have a big problem that has been occurring as we see everything getting much, much worse since the financial crisis. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to become an insider. The Insiders is where I give out all my best intel for free and I believe there are now 1,700 or more, in fact, people on The Insider. So it is growing very, very rapidly now and I want to say hello to each and every one of you. If you want to get on there, all you need to do is go to the moneygps.com, scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address and you get occasional emails from me with good, short, concise, Info.